Yeah, I don't know. Initial instructions, you didn't only have 411 staffs, but glad you can't see out there. What were your initial impressions? Actually, I thought he did pretty good, considering that was going to be his first real contact work, minus the preseason, and he had a couple of days in practice last week. But for what we asked him to do, I think he played 11 snaps, and it was hard-pressed to find a minor, so, and I was looking for it, so but he did okay. He was able to go out there considering he, he wasn't per se in, in football shape. Well, he's been doing a lot of conditioning and stuff and everything, and they're just taking it precaution. But he was he was really we thought we had a kind of a pitch count going in, and but we felt comfortable that he could get to that number. Um, in, in terms of him not going in the second half when he was in practice, do you just heard how likely you are to have him Sunday, or what do you expect there? I think right now they're still saying it's day to day, so we'll just kind of see as we go. Mike Green, in terms of other new guys, right. played something in 30 snaps. Right. But just what you liked about him, obviously you put him on the roster, you liked him, but how well he held up in his first game too. You know what, I thought Mike did pretty good. I'm on him in quite a bit now because I just need more production out of him because that's the reason he made the team when he flashed it with the playmaking ability and stuff. And, you know, but my hat goes off to Mike. Mike was a weekend workout guy that's now on our 53 and well deserving. So the thing is, Mike's a hard working guy, but as with him, with Mike, we see a guy that can make plays and we want him to turn more plays. Logan Hall, uh, played the most snaps on that defensive line. For you, it's much been talked about about him taking that jump year two. Got a nice tackle for a loss there, but other than that, what else did you see from him? Well, that's what I would say to him right after the game. And when we talked in the meeting, that was the thing you saw from him. A lot of the game slowed down for him. When you throw a rookie into this league, it's still a lot going on, this and that. And he said, you know, he felt like the game slowed down for him, this and that. And I think this guy's just going to keep getting better and better. He's a joy to coach. For, for defense to have three takeaways. And at a time when the offense is still kind of figuring things out, right. so many new pieces, just, just what does it mean for your group to be able to come up so big the way that they did? Well, the thing is you like to see that's something that we really stress. If we get takeovers, it increases our chances of winning. To produce three turnovers against that team was it says a lot. And a couple of them critical. You know, you don't get the interception. Now they might be feeling differently here right now. So they were all big. All big Winfield led to points and everything. It's just those are big plays, huge plays. I know that, uh, you know, Todd dials up a lot of blitzes and things like that, and you got a lot of guys who can get home. But to see a safety is as effective for the number of blitzes, I mean, he's got 10 sacks already in his career. What yeah, is I that knack that he has of, of avoiding that, that if, block? If you really look at the first pass they threw and he hit that was the rush was better than anything you know we got him free on the last on the the sack fumble but the to beat the back the way he did win is a, just a tremendous player I really think he's highly underrated I don't think people see him enough to realize what he means to us and what he does and exactly right his pass rushing prowess is impressive really impressive for safety of the running game to under 50 yards on the ground something that was an emphasis in the last couple of years, got away from it last year. Uh, how I don't know that, that we got away from it. I think they start blocking us. <laughs> I don't really know that we got away from it. We tried to stop them. It just didn't work out. How much does that uh, change, just change the game to allow your guys to go out there and play free to be able to, to, to get back to that one blocking identity that you have? Well, ideally, you want to make teams one-dimensional in this league. Then that way you can kind of concentrate on the one area. And then last week it worked out. But then coming in this week, is you're talking about the number one rushing offense in the league last year. So it'll be a be an interesting test for us. They're number one because I think the quarterback no quest does the most of it, right? Over a thousand, over a thousand yards when we, But when we looked at it last year, I know they had Montgomery in there, but they had an 800-yard rusher, a 700-yard rusher, and Herbert, and then he had 1,100. But it's like a, that tandem is still the way they did it. It was problematic, you know, because you, now you're sticking out there. DJ Moore is hanging out out there. Claypool, he beat us last year in Pittsburgh at the last second. Then you got Mooney that can fly, Komet, and you got this quarterback. You got to – it's just, they pose a lot of problems. How do you prepare for a guy that has that kind of speed, right? I mean, he's it is very – we yeah. just was looking at the scrambles today and just trying to make an emphasis. It's hard because you're going to be on the guy's – well, you got to rush him. Then you rush him and get out of your lane. Now he's taking off. Yeah. Then if you don't rush him, he you can't get those receivers that kind of time. It's, it, it just poses so many problems. Now you're playing the chess match. When you rush, when you don't, when you – it just it creates a lot of problems for you. You mentioned Herbert. Last time you guys played, he actually had uh, over yeah, 100 yards – on the ground and also beat you guys to the air with you know five steps with 33 yards ooh, ooh. there. What what is now he's kind of that lead back that got Rashad Johnson. 
Dante Foreman, who you know as well. Right. What kind okay. of problems does Herbert bring specifically now in that league? It's forward? really when the ball's in his hand, especially when the ball's in his hand, he just the vision that he finds them. They wear us, they hurt us the last one on the toss plays. And so when you see him on the perimeter, when they get the ball to him, he can find it. You know, the toss is going this way, but he finds it back there. His vision, and he, he poses a lot of problems. That's why I say their running game, when you look at it in the hole and the way they get to it and stuff, is, is problematic. Many games where Devin White was in a better position, whether it was run or pass, to put guys on the ground the way he did. did he? No, I just think, you know, really going back and just reviewing that game, I was really impressed with the way uh, – Vontae and Devin played. Those guys were made the plays they were supposed to. They were all big thing going into last week. Those bootlegs, that little hotter route, they were all over it. They really, really took a big part of the uh, plays that they wanted to do away from them. And then they were sure tacklers. You know, they were one on one tackles and they were putting them on the ground. Not just gang tackling, the one on one tackles. So my hat goes off to those guys. I'm glad they with us. What about Bulls defense? Just makes it so difficult for. Off, especially when he's setting pressure for offensive lines. I mean, you got Vita Vea dropping back on one, and you got Cansey at the wide seven, sweeping in on a – like, just the creativity and how – how like, do you ever find yourself, like, how has he come up with this stuff? Because, like, it's so effective and it's so exotic, and, and you don't see it from every defense. Well, that was make us unique because we like to think, you know – time you get to game four, that old line coach should see four different packages. He should see people everywhere. We want to, you know, I like to tell people, when you prepare against us, that card you showed those guys in there, you probably ain't going to see that. So the people you play against, the play against us, you really got to lean on your rules and everything. Because kind of what you think you're going to get, you, you're probably not getting it. So that's, that, and that helped these guys play faster. For a team that had, you know, like 12 penalties against the Steelers, for you guys to have such a clean game where, um, you know, obviously the, the turnover ratio was, was the big, you know, point of emphasis, but at the same time, like, you know, when the offense is struggling, just to be able to have such a clean game uh, in all phases, just what, you know, I guess how proud are you guys of being able to come out? No, that's a great point. When you look at it, I think we finished the game with three penalties or something like that. That was really good and a credit to a lot of things that stressed here in practice. You know, we don't want to beat ourselves and we don't want to help the opponent if we can help it. So those those were huge. How do you think about your – I'm sorry. I was going to say, how about the play of Anthony Nelson? What have you seen going from training camp and then progressing and getting the sack too on Sunday? Well, the thing is with Nelly, since he's been here, if you just kind of keep looking at all the plays that he made and say, I remember Arizona last year, you know, if he he caused the fumble that Devin picked up. If they go in and score there, I don't know that we win that game. Or if you think back to Carolina, the game that got us into the playoffs, he sacked fumble on – Nelly has always done that. You know what I'm saying? It's a luxury to have him as our three who could start at any time. So my hat goes, that guy just shows up and does his job. Good pro. Well, the thing about Shaq, you know, he just, we know he's a gamer. The thing is, the thing about Shaq is when I work for another coach, he said uh, the best thing about this player is he comes to the game with you. And Shaq is in that game. You know, you know, when we go out, the, he's coming to the game with you. And we get to the point where we expect a certain, and he always delivers. Just for him to be able to get to that game and, and no play quest. that game considering the, the injury that he had this past year. I mean, that's a career-threatening injury. For Coming guys. off the injury as fast as he could. And to be ready for training camp was impressive. It shows the guy is a good pro, and I'm glad he's with us. Coach Nell said one of the biggest takeaways that he had uh, coming out was this is a winning team. Um, what was your biggest takeaway watching the film and just coming out of that victory? Well, as you look at it, one that we had a lot of young guys that got a lot of minutes and – you know, every team is different. When you look at the different pieces that were out there that were, were in week one last year versus the pieces out there in week one this year, you just see the, the youth, the growth. But also in there, I felt like we got faster, stuff like that. Well, we gave up something here. We picked up something here. So it was just good to get off the week one with a win. You know, that is pushing Izzy a huge play. Huge play. The half. What, what did you see huge that? play. Well, the thing about him, you know, you go in and you play nickel in the National Football League. That's saying a lot, opening one, because that's probably the hardest position. So you got all those major slots, and you a factor in the run game, and you coverage is just the, what you ask of them. That you know, my hat goes off to him. Okay, thank, thank you, everybody. Yeah, have a go. Thank you.